far through to our second semi-final. A splinter proved too sore a point for Eric. And in the last show, two veterans of Robot War, Stinger and Bulldog Breed 2, fought it out in their heat final. The victory message, you have to spin to win. Bulldog in the bin, let's shatter steel. Crush Kevlar and Tata Tin, let Robot Wars begin! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the man who thought Green Beret was French for Gooseberry, Craig Charles. You know, I've been keeping up with some environmental issues and I've learned that in ten years' time the sea will have flooded half of Britain, which is good because I've always wanted to live by the sea. And did you know that every year manufacturers destroy a forest the size of Belgium? Why not just destroy Belgium? Thankfully, the one thing the world doesn't have less of is robot ears even if they do let off some pretty obnoxious gases. Time to see who's polluting the atmosphere this week. Our valiant underdogs this time, Craig, something and Mousetrap, who fought before Little Fly and Tiberius are newcomers, are Siege, Weldor at number 28, and Evil Weevil as high as number 12. Ready for a robotic rumble in the melees, we have the Evil Weevil team back again. Powered by a soda stream bottle, which powers a fire extinguisher, which powers this pneumatic axe, which will come hammering down like that and ruin somebody's day. Now, those guys were responsible for the death of Mousetrap in the last war, so controversy going on in this melee. Possibly a bit of a grudge match. This travel, this weighs how much? 11 kilograms, and it travels at 100 miles an hour, like that. And how does it work? Ouch! <laughs> The Tiberius team are new to the wars. This looks pretty special to me for a first attempt. It can pull a Volkswagen estate with the handbrake on. And we've got one and a half tons of pressure soaring down. That is the damage that it does. So for one of these teams, it will most definitely end in tears. It's time to single-handedly resurrect the steel industry. Let the wars begin. Seated number 12, Evil Weevil. Unlucky last time to meet Hypnodisc. Evil Weevil again has spikes and a pneumatic sledgehammer axe. The base is from the inside of a security van. The shell is fiberglass and Kevlar. Get ready for an upheaval from the Weevil. <laughs> Certainly lifted Panzer up and out of the reckoning last time around. Good speed. The weaponry looks secure and dangerous. Until Evil Weevil then came up against superior opposition in Hypnodisc. And the rest is history. It needs additional weaponry this time around to survive the house robots and the opponents. Hi, we're the Evil Weevil team from Puntan School in Cumbran. My name's Kevin Pritchard, this is Mark Meller and Ashley Evans. We are with the Bishops and Sir Jammer with a spike on top. And we've got a van the front. From Oxford and Bristol, the mouse trash. Made from steel and Lexan, scrapyard debris, oh, and an old office desk. This has a unique mousetrap weapon, powered by CO2, and is ready this time to rip those Mises to pieces. Last time around, they featured as Triterabot, beaten by Evil Weevil. Not enough weaponry, an awkward shape as well, and despite the fact they let off a smoke flare, disguised themselves under that smoke screen, little more was seen of Triterabot. Hello, my name's Jason. This is my dad, Stan. This is our robot called the Mousetrap. Um, it's got a trap mechanism which is designed to snare other robots. We've got, this is driven by two hydraulic rams driven off of high pressure carbon dioxide. Um, the, the wheels are driven by 750 watt motors, which are quite powerful. Top speed's about 12 miles an hour. From Brighton, Tiberius. This Emperor of Box has a steel armour-piercing weapon powered by a car jack, welded steel chassis armoured with polypropylene, the gears come from a motorbike, and Tiberius is ready to rule. Hello, we're the Tiberius team up from Brighton in Sussex. Uh, this is Tiberius. We've come here to hopefully win our first battle. My name's John. This is Sam. This is Simon. Sam, we'll talk you through the technicalities of the robot. 
Hi, it's powered by um, two 750 watt motors. Um, top speed around eight miles an hour, and it can pull a car up, up to about seven miles an hour. This is our offensive weapon, the armor piercer. This warhead was taken from a pneumatic road tool. It's been tested, gone through this um, stainless steel sheet, and we intend to do a lot of damage when we come up against the other robots. Roboteers, stand by. Evil Weevil, seated 12. Teacher, Kevin Pritchard, Ashley Evans and Mark Meller, his pupils, Mousetrap, Stan Launchbury and Jason, his son, at the controls, and Tiberius with John Coulthard, the teacher from Portslade Community College, Sam Smith at the controls. Evil Weevil, top of your picture, immediately taking on Tiberius, darting away from Mousetrap and that weapon which allegedly travels at 100 miles an hour. Are you sure Tiberius darts away then from Evil Weevil? Top speeds of 10 miles an hour on the Weevil. Experienced team Kevin Pritchard was a member of the winning panic attack team in the second wars. There's Evil Weevil on the arena wall. Tentative stuff so far. Tiberius with the armor piercer made of steel. Just side by side away from mouse traps. Rather predictable and ponderous weapon. This is Tiberius in underneath mouse trap. Mousetrap with a, a ground clearance of 20 millimetres in danger. There's the pickaxe of Tiberius pinning Mousetrap down. Well, Stale made it would seem there. It certainly pierced the uh, shell of Mousetrap, Steel and Lexan's shell, and Evil Weevil has not done anything. One wonders whether Evil Weevil has been immobilised very early on here. It hasn't moved, and this is a surprise and a shock. The number 12 seeds from Trantanum School, Evil Weevil. Immobilised, shunt on the right, dead metal on the left. A waggle of the antenna, that's not enough. You can waggle your antenna at Matilda all night, but the red box not confused. He knows what's going on. Mousetrap in the clutches of the red box. What is going on there? Referee's not supposed to do that. Mousetrap now, side by side with Tiberius, but this is where the grinding, the mashing of metal and the destruction's going on, and it's all over. For Evil Weevil, the bronze shell is ruptured and torched. There's Bashin with the great flame throw. Oh, a lick of flame on the arena floor. And Evil Weevil back to Cardiff in pieces, it would seem. Mousetrap and Tiberius, all they've got to do is stay out of danger from the house robots. Well. Knocked out by Hypnodisc last time around. They haven't got very far. Evil Weevil and Mousetrap and Tiberius have got themselves into problems. How daft is that? Going into the CPZ, the corner patrol zone, and over goes Evil Weevil. Shards of metal flying off. Bounce. Off comes a bit of the plating. We know Evil Weevil are finished. It's a question now of damage limitation. And that's a disappointment for Kevin Pritchard and the Evil Weevil team. They're out. Well, we lose a seed as Mousetrap and Tiberius go into round two. Robot Wars is as much about chance as it is about design. What happened? Uh, battery went dead. Your battery went dead? Yeah. yeah. Of the six that we had, we chose when we hadn't fully charged, or thought we'd fully charged, but hadn't. And, well, it's Murphy's Law, isn't it? <laughs> Everything that will go wrong... Shall go wrong. Oh dear. Oh dear. So we've just got cosmetic damage and. Um, the soda stream bottle held up. Yeah. I'm pleased that was everything that. was fine. Yeah. Well, you've been a great team. Thanks a lot. Back to Cumbran. Back to all the way back to Cumbran, yeah. Till next year. Well, good to see them back. Fly away to fight another day. All that brings us on to our next battle. Weld or something against Little Fly. The robots for the melee do not look shy. This is Little Fly from Dover. Richard, what are you going to do to the other robots? Smash them to pieces. Yes. This uh, plate here rotates at 1,000 RPM, which is pretty fast. Aluminium coated. Looking quite good, actually. Something. It's a bit of a grungy bot. What was your thinking behind the design of this? Right, we wanted to build something that was dead low tech, so we can hack back at the computer electro age of the yeah. scientific generation. Yes, yes. Indeed fighting so. talk. <laughs> Dirty fighting talk. And it's talk. built for brawling. <laughs> this is the Weldor team. They lost their axe to Sir lot in the last wars. Back, bigger axe, better we hope, but a lot of it hasn't been tested yet, so for all of us, it will be a revelation. Something. 
This war's veteran returns with a wedge shape to bulldoze, a pickaxe to shred, a spike to puncture. Took two years to build with parts plucked from rubbish skips. Is this something special or something and nothing? Because it was last time around on the word activate came flying out against the pit bull and... Uh... Oh, that was it! Over in a trice! Kill a lot, finish them off! Something and nothing, surely, last time around. Can't do worse, can it? Hi, I'm Dig. This is my mates Johnny and Jeff, and this is our robot, the Something. It's greatly improved from last year, hopefully be more reliable. Uh, we've still got the great big axe, and we've still got the spikes and the forklift type thing. Got a bit of a wedge at the back here as well. A bit more weld this year. A bit more weld, <laughs> a bit less weight. From Dover, Little Fly. Named after the team's horsepower comes from two wheelchair motors, but top speed's just four miles an hour. Not impressive. The weapon's an agricultural lawnmower blade, giving the fly plenty of buzz. Hello, my name's John. This is Richard, my son, and my team member, Andy. And this is our robot, Little Fly. It's powered by two 24-volt wheelchair motors, and it's got a 12-volt starter motor for a weapon, which is a spinning blade. Um, it's got a searchlight on the front so we can see where we're going and hopefully confuse the enemy. And a special warning light on the front so we can see when the uh, weapon's armed and spinning round. Hopefully we're going to be rather well in the wars and um, chop some uh, opponents up. From Belfast, Weldor. Heaviest but fastest in the heat, reached the second round of the last wars, has a pneumatic hammer and self-writing ramming arm, six millimetre thick polycarbonate shell. I worry if the ground clearance is too great in places though. Wasn't necessarily a problem last time around. Knocked out in round two by King Buxton, slamming it against the arena wall. The axe then pinned itself to the arena wall, and in came Killalot, and, uh, well, you face the... Shock was the message there. Out they went, Weldor from Belfast. Hi there, my name's Phelan. This is David. This is Damien. We're Team Weldor. Um, this is our new robot. We were here at the last wars. Completely new design. Hopefully... We've got a far stronger axe than what we had last year. Pneumatic flipper. Um, last year we had a bit of a run-in with Sir Killalot. He snipped off our axe. Hopefully this year, we'll, everything goes well for us. We'll get an wee chance. We'll get an wee poke at him this year. Roboteers, stand by. Little fly with Andy Hoskin at the controls on the right-hand side there. Little Richard in the middle. Here's something with Dig in the middle at the controls. There's Weldor, Fellum at the controls with half of Belfast City in there with him too. Three, two, one. Interesting to see something here. They say it's got a little bit of welding, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and a little bit of a razor blade, I would suggest, in Dick's household. Not a complete one. That's Weldor on the right now, and Little Fly coming rushing in with the 1,000 RPM agricultural lawnmower blade spinning. I thought it was stuck for one moment. Something's lasted longer than it did last time around with a pickaxe blade coming in. Fast on Little Fly, bouncing away. Good aggression by something. Weldor uh, looking to cause some damage. Something spins away. The shunt in the top of your picture. Bash to the left. He wants to stay clear of those. Oh, slam! Like dodgems in a fairground. Good even contest this. Again, that blade seems to be stuck by Little Fly. Once it hits metal, it seems to jar, drag, and then uh, have a redundant spell. That's something with the great axe coming down once again. The pickaxe built for brawling, Jules describes something. Low tech in the war against high tech computers. Something fighting back for the age old traditions, perhaps. Slam goes the axe on Weldord's frame. It'll need something to. Penetrate that six millimetre polycarbonate shell though. But all the aggression from something and Richard Dick to give him his full name at the controls there in the middle is doing splendidly here. That's a little nudge from Weldor on Little Fly and again it was something that came slamming in. Little Fly's rotational blade spinning but not causing any major damage. Trying to get things going. Andy Hoskin at the controls. Young Richard there from St Margaret School in Kent giving him advice. Something to the left-hand side, very even, this could go to the judges. Style control, damage and aggression, they'll be looking there to add up the points. Little fly, a little bit too slow for me, four miles an hour, top speeds, that dig of the controls again of something. The aggressor certainly in the heat. On the wedge-shaped front of Weldor, trying to uh, get an angled run in so that the axe can cause maximum damage. Weldor back strengthened. 
A new robot for this competition, knocked out in round two by King Baxton last time around. Weldor, has it stopped, I wonder? Something is certainly still active, but that was the penetrating blow of the axe of something. And I just wonder, Weldor, I think, has been immobilised by that blow. Weldor has been immobilised. In comes Shunt now. Weldor's out of it. So the judges will not have to decide. Weldor has gone. Shunt with a smack of the axe. Bash in there behind as well. Very good even contest. It was one decisive blow. But there's something axe that caused all the problems. And that's the end of the road for Weldor. Fell in Lundy. Damien and David in his team. Disappointment for them. Kilolots there with the blinking eyes of menace and destruction. The torch also a bash. There's Shunt as well. Well, they survived with Little Fly. Just the pit descends. And the destination of Weldor in to the gloom of the pit. Cease. Weldor came all the way from Belfast. They've got to turn around and go back again. They go out. I think that damage... Oh, well, to be fair now to the wee, that wee small uh, little fly, he was doing us a lot of damage with his, uh, his flipper. Uh, we spinning disc thing, and uh, I think he's done the majority of that there damage there. Um, he did remove one of my cables off my batteries, and that's what actually immobilised us. And then once that happened, then the house robots just moved in. So kill a lot done that there damage, um, and shunt done that there. But basically, there was nothing in there. Like, but I was more worried about the Thontax speed controller. Like so, but it's it's a hundred percent. So at least I can go home now and start building for next year. Well, just a sense there, the power of Gillock can slice through. Armour plating Weldor has gone out, joining Evil Weevil in the bin. This is how they'll line up later in the show. Tiberius against Little Fly and something against Mousetrap. The two seeds are out. While our surviving robots go off to oil themselves, I've got a question for you. Why are dolphins so good at pinball? It's because they've got an extra pair of flippers. Punchline. Let the trials begin! <laughs> Sorry, Craig, where was the punchline? Oh, tell me later. Ah, uh, six robots to go to overcome Spawn of Scudder's mighty 245 points in this. From Huddersfield, Banshee. They were in Series 3 with Shark Attack. They were knocked out by Beamoth, Graham Walker, Richard Jackson, Alan Marchington, a retired art teacher with Banshee. This is a test of driving skills, control, speed. Points around the arena floor. Two, one, activate. It's a barrels down, five points for each barrel. <laughs> Not over. In your own time, boys. Don't worry about it. Five points for each of the barrels knocked over. That's about 15 points then. Look, this is a speedy turn. Hello, I'm turning. I'm turning any day now. I'm turning. Oh, that's aiming at the 50 points though. Across goes Bash to cover, 50 points scored! Steady progress, the word steady being emphasised, a grisly looking machine. You can't get another 50, by the way, by hitting that target again. Ooh, that's a speedy, nifty turn, yes! Building up a real head of steam now. And there's points for the multi-ball option, release those balls, 10 points for that. Each ball into the pit, another five points. Now, which way are we going, dear? OK, steady as she goes. I'm coming towards the ramp now, House Robots. Well, I plan to. Spectacular. Spectacular. Magnificent. Well, let's have a look at it again. They eventually got to the barrels. Yeah, that 15 points scored there. That's a good 50. Credit where it's due. <laughs> and the multi-ball release. And there we have it. Only 75 points scored. Gives you a sense of what Spawn of Scudder achieved. 245 and five strong robots still to go. Personally, I think I'm going to stick with the fruit machines. Right now, though, let's get back to the wars. Don't forget, Craig, the seeds have gone, so we've got something, the brawler against the mousetrap weapon. And you've got Little Fly with the agricultural lawnmower blade against the armor-piercing weapon of Tiberius from Brighton. This is going to be easy pickings for you lot, really, isn't it? Um, Tell me the garage door story. 
Well, it wasn't my garage door, it was Sam's dad's garage door. <laughs> and the robot, what happened? Well, it smashed into the bottom of it, um, just for slightly bad driving. We just said it slow. Didn't expect it to be very powerful and just broke some bottom panels. So you're going to make small fry a little fly? Well, we'll do our best. Um, we don't, we're just, uh, yeah, we're not sure what's going to happen. Um, just try and keep out the house robot's way to um, do a lot of damage to us. Well, it's your first wars, but it's their first wars too. So don't panic. <laughs> How's the uh, spinning plate working? Uh, very well at the moment. It yes. seems to have um, been effective in the first battle. Uh, we have managed to bend it slightly, uh, so it's got a bit of a kink in it, but it seems to be working, so hopefully. And if you were backing this match, uh, would you back yourselves? Oh, of course. No question about it. Yeah? No question about it, yes. So you're confident? Absolutely. Good news. Let's see what happens. Okay. Killer lot who hates little fly with Andy Hoskin at the controls, John Woodward and his nine year old son Richard, and there's Tiberius with the armor piercer with Sam Smith at the controls, the blonde lad there. Two, one, Tiberius, students at Fort Lake Community College, teacher John Coulthard Simon's dad, Tiberius on the attack. There is the blade of little fly, which caused the damage to Weldor in the last battle. I thought it was more superficial damage, I must admit. Little Fly turning progressively on the attack on Tiberius. Tiberius would be my fancy in this battle. Little Fly has so far proved an underdog of worthy consideration. Bashed against the arena wall and very dangerously near the CPZ. Bash had a little tentative prod, went back in again. Now slamming it against Bash. Tiberius has set Little Fly up for destruction here. Tiberius again, the wedge in underneath Little Fly. Ground clearance of 50 millimetres under the fly. Tiberius very confident at the moment. You might say their attitude is a, a, a Little Fly. But maybe you wouldn't. All right, Craig, yours was funnier than mine. Tiberius again on the attack, trying to slam in on Little Fly. Oh, he's on the arena. Flipper there, you don't want to hang around there for very long. Fly, get away does so. You see, I don't think that blade, when it's up against uh, a welded steel chassis or a polypropylene armour, can cause much damage to the fly's weaponry. Spinning at 1,000 RPM, driven by a 12 volt motor up on the top there of Tiberius. Let's have a look at this again. Tiberius slamming in underneath. That's a punishing, crumpling attack onto the arena wall. Don't forget, all around the arena we have spikes. You can see them there. Actually, I think the spikes penetrating the back of Little Fly there. Tiberius is wedged in underneath. This is shunt, buckling and bouncing away. The ref bot came in. Tiberius in underneath that arena wall spike, and that is dangerous. There for Sam Smith at the controls of Tiberius. They've got themselves in real problems here. Shunt penetrating that polypropylene armor to carry it away into another dangerous area under the spike. There's something wrong there. I think the gears are stuck. I think they've been immobilized. They're spinning away, but I, I think there was a problem there. I think they're stuck here in forward drive. Certainly the message has gone out for the house robots. In comes Killalot. In comes Killalot. They must have been immobilized because the house robots can come in. And Killalot. And that's the end of Tiberius Sam Smith. You are going. You are going. You are gone. Ooh, no, you're not, not yet. You are on the brink, though, Sam Smith. Get your machine away if you can. I don't think he can. I think there's no more drive. Matildi, a little shove, a little glance, a little delicate blow. Sam Smith and Tiberius, you have gone. Well, Tiberius will roam no longer. Little Fly spreads his wings once more. Let's hear for Little Fly. Well, that didn't go according to plan, did it, really? No, it wasn't as we expected at all. We um, hoped to do better. Well, you got stuck on the... Um, the grinders. On, on the grinders. Yeah, yes. But the house robots were trying to help you out there. They were, yeah, trying to, they were trying to pull you out. But when we pulled you out, you weren't going... Yeah, we, we lost drive quite early on. Um, the, the whole drive was just it's not working, wasn't responding. And uh, we have to go down and have a look and see what's happened. We're not sure yet. Because you weren't even using your spike thing, were no. you? No, uh, we're going we're we to... We lost control of that as well yeah. and pretty yeah. early on. So. 
nothing we could do. So basically it all went pants for you today, didn't it? Yeah, totally, yeah. <laughs> Never mind, you'll come back again, won't you? Oh yeah, okay. definitely. Let's hear it for Tiberius! <laughs> well, little flight. I can't believe you got through that. Um, you, you, your thing that sort of, sort of helicopter the blade wasn't doing much damage to him, but he wasn't working at all, was he? No. No, oh, and then the house robots put him in the pit. Yep. Are you enjoying yourself on Robot Wars so far? Yes. What was your um, battle plan there? Well, I mean, what were um, you trying to do? Well, we couldn't see anything obvious to hit on it, so the idea was just to run around and do whatever we could do. Try and um, keep out of its way. Yes. Um, <laughs> as we just heard, the spike wasn't working, which is probably quite good for us. And then with a bit of a tussle in the corner, we're not quite sure what happened there. And well, you, you got, all got we, stuck on each other. Yeah, we once the house robot, house robot split you up, you were the guys that were running. Yeah, we were still running, so uh, that was it. We basically keep out of the way, keep moving, and um, let the house robots take over. Well, there's no flies on you, is there? So Let's hear it for Little Fly! <laughs> Young Richard Woodward was proposed to when he was four years of age. He didn't say yes, he said no. Little fly through something against a mousetrap. They're up next. Well, we've dug ourselves in, haven't we, at the back of the arena? The something. Scrapyard chic team, how you doing? <laughs> I think the laugh says it all, really. <laughs> We're overjoyed we made it through the first round. Yeah? Yeah. Have you made any repairs for this round? Yeah, we've got a different <laughs> axe on it because we've all got a bit bent, so we found a chisel and welded that to it. And um, oh, the wheel's got a little bit shredded by the fly, so we've uh -huh. got to... So what's your message for Mousetrap? Have you got one? <laughs> I don't know, really. They're not the worst people in the world. You know, they're not full of diodes and computer chips and stuff. No, quite Got some pneumatics going on, yeah, there's a, you know, we'll have to see. Chains and cogs there. What's there's some that? chains and cogs in there, we noticed, but I, I feel fairly confident. I think their weak pot, though. Oh, so it's not all good stuff being low-tech, then? <laughs> no, not all the time, no. Yeah, you want to beat them anyway, don't you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we have been pretty impressed by the mouse trap so far. Love the speed of the flipper, that's excellent, but it does take quite a long time to crank back up, doesn't it? Why it does. does. Uh, I think we had a problem with the valve actuation last time, so it wasn't opening the valve fully, so it's quite slow on the return. So we put an extra uh, solenoid in there to hopefully sort that out. Excellent news, and uh, which one of you is going to be the cheese? Cheese? <laughs> <laughs> <I'm thinking, yeah. laughs> no way! <laughs> Roboteers, stand by. Well, the big cheese for Mousetrap is Jason at the controls. Something scrapyard chic. What's next? Gorgeous grunge? Classic crusty? What's next for something? I thought they were very impressive in the first battle. Nippy around the arena, very aggressive. Good control. They need to stay away from the Mousetrap weapon. Goodness me! Did you see the force, the velocity of that Mousetrap weapon springing into action there? Didn't catch! something, but the warning signs are flashing. Oh, there it goes! And it has pinned something's weaponry down! A great slam of the mousetrap! Well, there was a prod of the axe, and look at that for a slam of the mousetrap. I wonder why they didn't keep it there, though. They pinned something in. They could have dragged it towards the pit, dragged it into a CPZ, let the house robots take over. Did they let something get away too cheaply there? Will they rue that decision? Something bouncing off the front of Mousetrap, using the wedge shape to get in underneath something, a ground clearance of eight millimetres on the sump. A little bit tentative now, something again, the Mousetrap weaponry comes down. See the great spring on top there? The chassis of Mousetrap used to be an office desk, by the way. And something's prongs come flicking out the front, and the axe again, the big axe, but all of a sudden, that doesn't look too punishing, does it? This is very even at the moment, but Mousetrap is suddenly moving. And it's something doing all the aggression. And Shunt senses something is on. No, Mousetrap's OK. Just moving away. The first gear perhaps stops once more. Is everything OK with the Mousetrap control for Jason Launchbury? Jason responsible for the electrics of the team. His dad stands for the mechanics. But Mousetrap's second best here, quite clearly. Another attack by something slamming against the inner wall. What's happened there? Something has caused its self-distress and damage. We'll have to have a look at it again, but it came hurtling towards the arena wall, and I think something...
something. He's immobilized here. Let's look at it again. Down went the forks on the front and they buckled underneath and that means there's no traction for the great wheels. Something. Dig, you have dug yourself into oblivion here. And in come the house robots. Mousetrap was barely alive, but something killed itself off. This is dead metal. Oh, what a shame. Oh, that's a grisly end because they were well on top. But it's the house robots now who will finish off the load. Tech battler something built for brawling scrap yard chic. But I'm afraid in the end, pitted against superior opposition of the house robots after causing itself so much damage, it will be sweet nothing for something tossed and tattered, bashed and bruised and beaten. In comes Dead Metal, and something is pitted. Cease. What a shape. Well, something mobilised themselves. Mousetrap was still moving, albeit slightly. Mousetrap, go through. <laughs> You've got to be upset. They're not guilty. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if... He was only moving ever so slightly. If you, well, just, if you just kept away from them and just, you know, just sort of well, we've behave got yourselves. We've got a few good blows in there. Yeah, I mean, it's a lovely, lovely axe. Lovely design, that robot as well. What, what went wrong? Um, we've got a chain and it snapped. When the chain snaps, it leaps over and beaches itself on its own forklift. Now, it's a bit of a design flaw, you might think. <laughs> a definite design <laughs> flaw. He beached something. Indeed so, sir. Hey, you're going to sort that floor out for next time. We'll try our best. It's been nice to have you here, lads. Let's Thanks hear it for something! <laughs> well, I thought that something was going to nick your cheese. I thought it was, actually, yeah. yeah. Um, it's, a... it's a very unusual robot. What's that sort of trap bit do? I mean, once you've trapped him, you did trap his, his, yes. his axe, and then, but then you've got to let it go, haven't you? Well, we don't have to. We just thought we'd... Uh... Try and, tra try and hit him again. Nah, some if, more damage. if you trap him when the pit's activated, you can actually then try and drag him towards the that pit. That was the original right? design idea, yeah. yeah. We actually trap them and then take them where we want them. I think we're lucky, actually. You're very <laughs> lucky, very lucky. Woo! You're through to the next round, though. Yep, that's brilliant. Great. Let's hear it for Mousetrap! Dig, what do we think about the judge's decision? Well, I don't want to cause controversy, but it seemed as we were both immobilised at the same time yeah and uh, we were actually showing signs of life it was actually we couldn't physically move across the arena floor although our motors and drives and stuff were still working we still had radio contact etc um so why couldn't you physically i mean were you immobilized that's the key thing isn't we it? were immobilized as in we could not move exactly I mean, that's kind of the definition of the word, isn't yes, it? Yes, but I didn't see them exactly doing a lot of sprinting either. Exactly. So, anyway, you yeah. know what's happened, don't you? We do. That uh, the mousetrap possibly aren't going to be back in action for the next round anyway, in which yes, case you will that. go through. A little smile just on the side of my mouth. <laughs> yeah, just on the one side. 50% <laughs> smile, 50% yes. yes. tears. So, you're going to make some repairs anyway? It's as good as repaired now. It didn't take you long, did it? There's not, well, there's not a lot to go wrong on a very basic robot like this. Of course there isn't. Indeed so. And uh, if you could have had a bit more technology, would you have had? Oh, no, indeed. If you had more tech... In fact, the only piece that's broken, our switchboard, there's loads of things connected to a block of wood, and the only bit that's broke is this PCB. Uh, uh, <sighs> you can't get the parts, can you? <laughs> Let's go and see what the mouse trap think about all that. Team! Oh, yeah. You were lucky on the judge's decision. We were very, very lucky on the judge's decision. But perhaps not so lucky now. What's happening? We, we found out the problem. We got the main switch burnt out, so we're just fitting a new switch in it. Is we're it going to be, be simple to fix, do you think? Yeah. Well, here's the switch. We right. should replace that, basically. It's, uh, we know they're 10 faulty. Ten pence worth of problem? Probably about ten p, yeah. <laughs> it's a bit, bit, bit more, maybe. NP or a new PCB or your guess is as good as mine. I hope it's digged for victory next time around. He's been great fun with something. They're out though. And of course it means that the Heat K final, Little Fly against Mousetrap. <laughs> Let's have a look back at the road to the Heat final then. Mousetrap beating Evil Weevil first of all. With the help from the arena floor flipper. And then, rather controversially was it, 
edging past something thanks to that. Meanwhile, Little Fly, with something, was beating Weldor. They were pitted. And then Little Fly took on Tiberius. Tiberius and all sorts of problems against the arena sidewall and against the house robots. The Little Fly team about to go into the heat final. This is serious, isn't it? Because it's your first time on Rebel Wars. First time. An incredible achievement, really. Didn't think we'd get this far. We're glad. I mean, every battle we've got now is just a bonus, so glad we've done it. So if we win, we win. If we lose, we've enjoyed ourselves. And you're swapping drivers. You're taking turns, aren't you? Yeah, it's my turn. And it's your turn now, so you're it's the most turn. nervous, are you? I am. Yeah. You haven't had a go, I take it. No. No, no. Looking cool and composed, the mousetrap team, or perhaps slightly exhausted, now I can see your faces. <laughs> This is the furthest you've come because you were in the wars last year. That's right, yeah. And went out in the first round. Indeed, yeah. So you've done incredibly well. We have. You're pleased Free. with yourself. We are, yeah. Father and son team, very nice to see. Yep. Now I think if your weapon comes down on the little fly's spinning plate, I you're in it, with a serious chance. I think it might break off, yeah. It might break it off. It's got some um, sort of, uh, fairly weak uh, armour on the wheels as well, which I think might cave in, possibly, if it works. Two robots left, only one place in the series semi-final. It's number crunching time. It's the third and final round. From Dover, Little Fly. With its lawnmower blade, go-kart wheels, wheelchair motors, Andy Hoskin at controls, John Woodward there, Richard, his son. From Oxford and Bristol, the mousetrap. With its unique weapon, Stan Launchman on the left, Dad to Jason on the right. Loves his hill walking, Jason. Robotiers, stand by. Three, two, one. It's actually off to Peru later on in this year, uh, Jason, for hill walking. Jason at uh, the Andes, not hills actually. Little fly spins away. There's the rotating blade. Well, a shard of metal flew up in the air there. Off mousetrap, off little fly. Difficult to tell, really. Mousetrap again, just waiting. Come into my parlour, said the mousetrap to the fly. Little fly, not buying that. Backing away, oh, dear, oh, dear, when that comes down, there's some force. So, it's the blade against the immovable force. They've cracked the weapon back. Will it come down? Will it buckle that blade? No. Bounced away off the frame of Little Fly. Shell is aluminium and withstanding mousetrap. This, you know, is very even. And unless there is a driving disaster, it could go all the way to a judge's decision. The damage on the back of Little Fly caused earlier in the heat, not in this final. But Little Fly edged against the inner now using great power and pressure to push back. Mousetrap up to 12 and a half miles an hour. Little Fly only four miles an hour top speed. On the attack, trying to maybe use the blade to sever the spring of the mouse trap. Whoa, well, hey, mouse trap has driven itself onto the blade. Little fly backed onto the arena floor flipper as well. Edging away very slowly. Aggression by mouse trap. Don't forget, this could all come into play if it goes to the judges. Damage control style and aggression. They'll be looking for mouse trap on the attack. The wedge shape, classic to Robot Wars. Pushing Little Fly into the CPZ. Matilda's there to try and get an attack with the tusks. Flipping Little Fly. The attempt was made by Matilda. Her tusks are raised. Still in the CPZ now. Little Fly needs to get away from there. Let me get the house. Robots can't pursue across the arena floor unless you are immobilised. There we're seeing the launch breeze of the controls of Mousetrap. Here we're seeing Andy Hoskin, John Woodward and Richard Woodward with the controls of Little Fly. Backing perhaps to have another attack. This is going to go to the judges, I'm sure. The heat will go to a judge's decision. It is very, very even and difficult to call this one. Beyond my limited powers, anyway. I wonder what they think. Very, very, very difficult to call. That's one for the judges, I'm afraid. Craig, for the first time, I am beaten. I have not the faintest. Little fly on the attack. Wedged on, mousetrap, though. There's... 
Aggression from our sub and again. It's too close for me. Little fly into the CPZ could count against it. And under pressure from Matilda. I don't know. I just don't know. Too close. Well, feels like I've been holding your hand forever. It's been a long one. Deliberated long and hard, guys. A tough decision. They've been looking at style, control, damage and aggression. And they've gone for Mousetrap! <laughs> That was touch and go. I bet you're gutted, aren't you? Yeah. It was, I would not, I would have given it as a draw. Go and blame the judges, okay? I would have given it, it was so close. Don't worry, you'll come back next time, won't you? You'll do better. Yeah. It was just, forgive the pun, but you were a gnat's yeah. breath away, weren't you? Oh, well, we did and very well to get this far, so we're well, well you've done. Pleased. You've done splendidly, and we've well enjoyed pleased. having you. Yeah. And don't you be so upset, young man. We'll have you back next time, okay? Let's hear it for the little fly! <laughs> it was. I mean, because when they were looking at damage, because you, I mean, your mousetrap thing was damaged. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I thought you just yeah, the chain's broken. So, yeah. So I, I was, you know, I was yeah, thinking well, it was going to go the other way. Me. Yeah, I'm me. Yeah. At least it did go this way, but it wouldn't have surprised me one little tiny bit. You're in the, the other way. You're in the series semi-finals. Oh, oh, magic. Yeah. That's more that's you could have dreamed of. That's absolutely yeah, excellent. Absolutely. Are you going to make any alterations to the robot? Well, it can't be this close all the time. <laughs> no, we were saying that there, there is a, a higher grade chain that we can fit to replace the chains that we broke. According to our calculations, it, it shouldn't have broke, but it's all prototype stuff, so you don't know where you are. You know. All right. See you in the series semi-final. Yeah. Let's hear it for Mousetrap! <laughs> well, we've got our own rules and we've got our own laws, but controversy reigns on Robot Wars. Bye-bye. Scutter, our number 10 seeds, are up next time fighting for a series semi final place against the Banshee and the Nightmare. And seeded number 26, Blunderbird 4 against Bursin Gedericks and Fat Boy Tin. You ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs>